Okay, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here in, at the ICTP. I thank you very much the organizers, especially Stefano, for the invitation. Okay, so let me state the setting in which we are, are going to, to work. We are going to prove that center unstable foliations do not have compact leaves. But we are working on this setting. We are working on a three-dimensional manifold, and we are considering a partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism which means that the tangent bundle splits into three invariant bundles. Such that this is strongly contracting. This is strongly expanding. And this is, has an intermediate behavior. This means that it is not as contracting as this, nor as expanding as this. And three, the three bundles are one dimensional. So they are non-trivial. Non okay, what do we know about these bundles? In general, we know, it's classic result, that the strong bundles, the expanding and the, the contracting and the expanding ones, are integrable. These are integrable. And this is integrable. But in general, it is not known whether the center bundle is integrable. Okay? For 35 years, it has been an open question whether you could integrate this to a foliation. And in, I guess, 2009, it's, it is now in print, uh, Federico Raúl and I proved that there exists an example, an open set of diffeomorphisms on the three torus such that if the center bundle is not integrable to a foliation. Let me explain better what we would like to have as a, an integrable foliation. We will say that a diffeomorphism is dynamically coherent We will say that F is dynamically coherent if there exists an invariant foliation tangent to the center and stable bundle, and if there exists an invariant foliation tangent to the center stable bundle. Okay? Of course, the existence of these two foliations imply the existence of an invariant one-dimensional foliation tangent to the center bundle. So what we proved here is that there exists an open set of diffeomorphisms, of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms, such that F is not dynamically coherent. This, is, uh, this example consists, has a torus, a, a center and stable fixed torus, which is attracting. And in, in this torus, if you cut 
this, uh, consider this as a center and stable torus, you will have that it is uniquely integrable outside the torus, but the leaves are like this. So you cannot obtain a foliation, a global foliation. Okay? So when we had this, we, after we build this example, we conjecture, well, what about if this is the general case? And we have a still open conjecture. A non dynamical conjecture, non dynamical coherence conjecture. With Federico and Raúl, which states that the only possibility for a diffeomorphism to be non-dynamically coherent is that it has a torus, either tangent to the center and stable bundle or tangent to the center and stable to the center stable band. C center stable or center and stable. So if F is not dynamically coherent, then either there exists a torus. tangent to the center unstable bundle, or there exists a torus tangent to the center stable bundle. And this conjecture so far has been proven true for manifolds that, are a, that have a solvable fundamental group by Andy Hammerlindl, and Rafael Potrier. They have proven that conjecture is true if the fundamental group is solvable. OK, so this is the state of the art so far. Let me mention, even though it has nothing to do with this, that we have a kind of sy symmetric conjecture with respect to ergodicity. We have, we conjecture that if it is non-dynamically co uh, dynamically coherent, then there is a, a torus tangent to the center unstable or a center stable. But we also have a conjecture that if, let me call it non-ergodic conjecture, which is for conservative setting, this is for any setting, but in the conservative setting, we have kind of symmetric conjecture that if this is non-ergodic, then there exists a torus tangent to ES plus EU. And this has uh, so far proven true in nil, only in nil manifolds. So we, we don't know, but it has some kind of strange that it has some kind of symmetry that exists. The, the only obstacle to non dynamical coherence is the existence of this tori, and the object, ob, ob, obstacle to ergodicity is the existence of this tori. It's kind of symmetric. Symmetric. Okay, so for solvable groups, we have this situation. But let me tell you that we have a result that states that if there exists a torus tangent to either the center stable or the center unstable or the stable unstable bundle or or <coughs> then the manifolds can only be the three torus or the um, I, 
suspension of the mi minus, uh, how do you say, mapping torus. It's the mapping torus of minus, ma plus minus the identity on a, um? yes, minus the identity. Or this is the mapping torus of a hyperbolic map on the torus. In particular, if there exists a torus tangent to either EC plus EU, EC plus ES, or ES plus EU, the only possibility is that M, the phi one of M, be solvable. Okay? So, in particular, the conjecture The non-dynamical uh, coherent conjecture now is that if pi one is not solvable, then all partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms are dynamically coherent. Okay, because. If, it is, if there is a torus, then we are in this case which, where we already know the situation. Okay, so I haven't mentioned so far the result. So this is a conjecture of where, when the, uh, what we are um, presenting here is that in general, almost everybody will be dynamically coherent, okay? Well, so we wanted to present a kind of converse, and the theorem here is kind of converse. So, this is the main theorem. We conjecture that if it is non-dynamically coherent, then there exists a torus, and what we are stating here is the converse. If there exists a torus, there cannot be a foliation containing it. So this is main theorem with Federico and Raúl. says that uh, if there exists an invariant foliation tangent to, ES, uh, to EC plus EU, then this foliation, uh, this foliation FCU does not have compact leaves. Okay? So um, the, I'm not meaning that there cannot be tori. There could be tori, but there, in fact, when the, in the example we built, we built an, a, an example also of a dynamically coherent example that has a center and stable torus. But this torus cannot be part of the foliation. It can be a torus tangent to the center and stable uh, bundle, but cannot be part of the foliation. You cannot complete the torus into an invariant foliation. Okay, so let me tell you well, what the strategy will be. First, a remark. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows what a rep component is. Uh, in our setting, a rep component with, will uh, a rep component would be a torus, a solid torus foliated by planes inside. I mean, the, there will be like paraboloids, one inside the other. I don't know if the, you can see. It will be a, a planes, like paraboloids, one inside the other. And in the board, in the boundary, you will have a torus. This is a rep component. One first thing, 
that we must know is that if a rep component if a rep component is transverse to the one dimensional foliation then once the one dimensional foliation enters transversely here it cannot get out so it must have a loop a, yes a, a closed curve in particular, this implies that there cannot be red components transverse to a stable flow, to a stable bundle. Because if you had this transverse to a stable bundle, this would imply that you have a closed loop, a closed stable loop. So in particular, this, if there exists an invariant foliation tangent to the center and stable bundle, it cannot have red components. Okay? So, first remark is that the center and stable foliation cannot have red components. So, our strategy will be to produce a red component. Assume that you, we have uh, an invariant foliation tangent to the center and stable bundle with a compact leaf and produce a rep component, okay? This, uh, if a compact leaf of this must be a torus because it is foliated by one dimensional uh, um, field uh, which has no singularities and no closed loops. So if it has a compact leaf, it, it must be a torus. So the strategy will be to produce a, compo a rep component, rep component, and how we will produce this? We will leave this to the universal cover. And how do you pr produce a, a rep component? If you get a closed loop transverse to the center and stable foliation in the universal cover by Novikov, you get a rep component, okay? So this is what we are going to do. We will get, in the universal cover, we will find a closed loop transverse to the lift of the center and stable foliation, and this will produce a rep component in M, and that will show it is not possible. So our strategy will be to produce a closed loop up. Okay, so how we will do this? First of all, we have to prove that the existence of a compact leaf implies, of, uh, implies the existence of a periodic torus with hyperbolic dynamics. A center and stable torus will produce a periodic torus with hyperbolic dynamics. So if there exists a torus, a compact leaf, which will be a torus, this implies a, the existence of, of a periodic torus. How you prove this? Well, by Hefliger, we, we have that in a foliation, the set of points belonging to a compact leaf is compact. So you take all the points belonging to tori, and this is compact. In particular, the limit of tori will be tori. And so this will be, you will take all the tori in the foliation and there will be a recurrent torus, okay? But the torus, the center and stable torus is transverse to the stable leaf, is transverse to the stable bundle. So you can produce a tubular neighborhood of a center and stable torus by stable leaves. And then when you get a recurrent torus, 
you will, by iteration, be able to get a fat torus inside itself. Then you iterate and then you produce a periodic torus. Okay, is it clear? So this implies there exists periodic. So now we want to show that the induced action on pi one is ergodic, is hyperbolic. And how is this? Well, this will preserve the unstable direction. Okay? So the, the action of F star on the torus will preserve the unstable direction. So you will have uh, an, eigenspa an eigenspace which is irrational. Okay? So this, has, this leaves us only two possibilities. Either F star is hyperbolic or F star is identity. Okay? But if F star was the identity, then we would have that F star is the identity plus some constant. Pardon? Yes, it's some, some plus something. I'm sorry. This is plus phi with phi bounded, periodic. And in particular, yes. Uh, in particular, you will, we will have that the diameter, you take a, an unstable leaf, a small piece of unstable leaf, and then the diameter of this will be bounded by the diameter of this plus nk, where k is the bound of this. So on one hand, we will have the, the, that the diameter grows at most linearly. And on the other hand, we have that this, the length of this, of this grows exponentially. OK? So we have on one hand that this grow, the diameter grows at most linearly, and the length grows exponentially. So we will have very long unstable segments which are uh, with endpoints end points at distance smaller than epsilon. Then by Poincaré Bendixson, this produces a closed loop inside this, or a singularity, and this cannot be. So what we have is that the existence of a compact leaf implies the existence of a periodic torus with hyperbolic dynamics. Okay. And now we are close. Now that we have a periodic torus with hyperbolic dynamics, we will produce this, we will have this torus to produce a closed loop transverse to the center and stable leaf. Okay, so by Franks, then cut the manifold along this torus, cut the manifold along this torus, and you will have that the manifold is the torus times the identity. Okay, if you cut it along the torus, you have the manifold, and you can trivially extend the diffeomorphism to this. And by Franks, you have a semi-conjugacy of this into torus times zero by a linear hyperbolic map. Okay? So this is a, uh, H, oh, I never remember. Yes. F, uh, H, O, F equals A composed with F. Okay, so it is not hard to see that on the torus, 
H on the tor restricted to the torus takes center leaves into stable leaves of A. C center leaves of the F into stable leaves of A. It, ca it has to be like this because if uh, H took, uh, if H wouldn't, uh, I mean, if for our purposes it is enough to look what happens with a periodic point. What I mean is that H minus one H of P intersection T is contained into a center segment of P. And look, you can take it to be in a local center segment. If, if it had the points of different center leaves, then you would have uh, points uh, that go very far away in, with respect to the unstable. You can join it with an unstable segment, and then you can have that this grows very far away. But this, I haven't said, this is homotopic to the projection. So in particular, H, the diameter of H minus one of H of I is uniformly bounded for all, uh, yes, for all Y in, in T. So this is uniformly bounded. So for a periodic point, this will be contained in, the cent in a center leaf. And it is not hard to prove that in general, if you do not restrict to T, if you stay, you just take this and you intersect this with a small ball, this is contained in the center stable local leaf of P. Then it is not hard to see that because you take a point here, then you project it in, into the into the center leaf, uh, you project along the stable into, into the center leaf, and then this commutes with this and takes center into center, uh, uh, stable into set, stable, so you will have that this pre-image of this image is always in the stand, uh, center stable leaf of P. Once we have this, we are almost done. Um, me. We're almost done. So we have that the diameter of all these points are uniformly bounded. So in particular, for each small epsilon, epsilon, there exists some n such that for all a set of n points, there are at least two of them that are epsilon close. You always have this. So there is a system such that if you have n points, then there exist two of them that are no more than epsilon, epsilon apart. Okay, so take in x1, xn, inside h minus 1, h of p, which is contained here. But take them so that in different center leaves. So you have p here, and take x1, x2, in different center leaves. You can take this in different center leaves, OK? Now, you iterate this backwards many times, as many times as you want. And then you will have for each n always a couple of points that are epsilon apart. In particular, there will be a pair of points, the same pair of points that infinitely many times is epsilon apart, okay? So you will have, there will be two of them, uh, let's assume 
x1, x2, such that distance of f minus nj of x1 and f minus nj of x2 is my, my, uh, less than epsilon for all j. You see? You will, since uh, you will have, uh, since this is always uh, at the distance, they, they, are all, uh, they, they are here, and this, uh, this is invariant by an iterate. You, we can assume it is fixed, so this is invariant. And so this, all iterates of this belong all the time here, and the backward iterates by the, our choice, we can always assume that there are a, a pair of them, and iterates, infinitely many iterates of them, such that they are always epsilon apart. We are almost there. With this, we are almost there. So we will have this. We will have this picture. We will have x1. This is the center of x1. These are all centers. This is x2. And then we can do the following. We can join x1 until we go by the center leaf until x2. And then we join x2 with a stable segment. OK? So we have, for infinitely many iterates, these two are epsilon close. OK? Now, I iterate this draw, this picture, backwards um, infinitely many times. So at infinity, well, at very close to infinity, I get this drawing. I will get x1 and x2 very close, OK? A huge. Um, a huge stable loop because this goes to infinity when I iterate um, backwards. This goes exponentially to infinity. And this center leap that can go or can, may or may not go to infinity, but I don't care. Okay, this is in a stable, in the center, in the center and stable. You may assume it is in a center and stable leaf. But now, this, this whole loop is transverse to the center and stable. This is transverse to the center and stable. Okay? I may assume that I have done this in the universal covering. This is transverse to the center and stable. Now, this is a straight segment contained in the center leaf, in the center and stable leaf. This close is horizontal. But I can perturb it because this is, this is very near. This is epsilon apart. So this is horizontal. This is very close. So I can make, um, I can take a tubular neighborhood here so that I can join this point and this point by a segment which is transverse to the center and stable leaf. This is super classical, OK? So I have, I have built a loop which is transverse to the center and stable foliation, and I complete it, close it by a segment that is transverse to the center and stable leaf, to the center and stable foliation. So I have got, in the universal cover, a closed loop transverse to the center and stable foliation. And so there is a red component, and this implies that an absurd contradiction. Okay, and this, this is it. I'm finished.